Thank you, Mr. Wright, for sharing your client's position. My name is Yolanda Wilson, and I am here representing Mather Organic Distillery in this breach of contract claim. As you noted, we are here to discuss MOD's motion in limine to exclude the claimed oral agreement from evidence since it was not agreed upon nor confirmed in writing and it does not follow industry standards. We are also asking the court to allow two expert witnesses to testify on industry standards regarding Ginger's trace GMO claim. As you noted, contracts may be supplemented by consistent additional terms under UCC 2-202. Additional terms could be expected industry discount standards, but they could not include oral agreements that were not accepted without consideration by the other party. The contract does not specify the percentage. We are here because the ambiguity must be cleared. Any claimed oral agreement that is a contradiction to industry standards should be barred as evidence since it's unfair and it's not agreed upon by both parties. The contract calls for a timely payment discount. When terms are ambiguous, a contract may be explained or supplemented by usage of trade. Section 2-202B allows for contextual evidence such as industry norms to be considered in contract law disputes. The discount does not follow industry standards. There is a large discount, for example, if it's paid a month in advance before delivery, but usually a very small percentage of paid at delivery or a short time after the delivery. The American Craft Spirits Association and the National Glass Association recommend on their website that a company can try to negotiate a better discount. A supplier is willing to offer a 2.5% discount or a 3% discount if a customer pays the invoice immediately upon delivery. Usually a 2% discount is the limit if it's paid within 10 days. Here Ginger Speak Easy paid in 12 days. Under Section 1205, Usage of Trade, Section 3, the parties are or should be aware of industry laws and standards. As you noted in the case Nana Cooley Paving and Rock Company versus Shell Oil Company, the court found that the judge did not abuse his discretion in defining the applicable trade for purposes of trade usages. Here we have a small group of organic distilleries and all natural drinking establishments that are close knit with expected discount rates. They follow USDA standards which allow up to 0.9% in trace elements or for organic certification. There are trace elements of GMO grains in most alcohol that is made from organic grains at less than 1%. There are no grains that are 100% organic available for sale. Our suppliers should be liable as third-party suppliers under UCC 2-722, but we can't show any damages because we're still organic and all natural. You noted that there's three questions in regards to 2-202 in the UCC concerning extrinsic evidence. Here we have a final written expression that's a fully integrated contract. The contract was the complete and exclusive embodiment of each agreement and each side's um, what they can gain from the contract. You claim that the purpose of introducing the oral agreement is to supplement the contract. However, any oral agreement did not include exact numbers and due dates. You can't just come up with random numbers that don't follow industry standards. We have shown any contested or ambiguous oral agreement claims made by Ginger Speakeasy regarding discounts should be excluded under the parole evidence rule. Since, since it is not contextual, it would be predatory against MOD and it would go against industry standards. We've also shown that the use of two witnesses are needed to explain the USDA requirements for organic certification. Please approve our motion in limine request to exclude any contested oral agreement claims by Ginger Speakeasy and allow two experts to speak on industry standards regarding trace elements of GMO grains. Your time is appreciated. Thank you.